Hello, everyone. It's Dr. Nirak Pandya. A lot of people have questions about the overall path of recovery of James Wiseman and why it's taking so long for him to come back to the court. Here's a quick breakdown, once again, of meniscus injuries, what surgery entails, and what could potentially require a secondary procedure down the road. Now, obviously, the key component of all of this is none of us have examined James Wiseman's knee, including myself, or have seen his MRI, or know exactly what they found during surgery. But here's a general overview of what to expect after meniscus injuries in athletes. Now, what the meniscus actually does, it's a shock absorber in the knee. It also provides some degree of stability. And here's a model of the knee that basically shows where the meniscus is located between your femur and your tibia. There's a meniscus over here and a meniscus over here. So basically a medial meniscus and a lateral meniscus. Now, when this gets injured in an athlete, generally you'll have lots of pain and swelling, sometimes some locking symptoms. There are basically three treatments when you have an MRI diagnosis of a meniscus tear. If it's a very small tear, you're not a very active athlete, you can try physical therapy and rehab. If you are an athlete or the tear is a little bit larger, then they're basically two options surgically. Now this surgery is done with an arthroscope, which means, basically means putting a small camera inside the knee. If the tear is very small, it doesn't have an area that has good blood supply, or it's very complex, meaning that it can't be sewn back together. A lot of times you'll actually shave out the meniscus. Now, the reason why you don't necessarily want to shave out the meniscus all the time is that when meniscus is shaved out, it doesn't grow back. So that means you have less shock absorption inside your knee and potentially less stability. Now, if the tear is large, it has good blood supply, meaning that it can heal back together, or it's in a very critical area where an athlete is young, then you arthroscopically will sew the meniscus back together. And the first key thing to understand is that there's drastically different recoveries between these two procedures. Typically, when a patient has a meniscus shaved out, that recovery is six to eight weeks. You don't have to basically let any period of time go by for the meniscus to actually fuse back together. You basically just need the knee to get back its strength, its mobility, and you can get back to play. But if you take a large amount of meniscus out, it does predispose you to potentially have arthritis and decreased function down the road. Now, if you have a meniscus repair, it's good in the sense that you preserved all the meniscus, particularly in a young athlete. The reason why it can take longer to basically recover is that meniscus tissue needs to fuse back together with the stitches that are initially holding it in place. Now, typically for recovery after meniscus repair, athletes are on a brace and crutches for six weeks. They generally can start running at four months. They can start jumping in agility around six months and usually get back to sports right around nine months. Now that time frame can vary a lot between that six to nine months. Some athletes may be a little bit sooner based on the sport that they play. And also if the tear is a little bit less complex. Some athletes may take a little bit longer, like eight to nine months, particularly if the tear is more complex, they have demands on their knee, or there are other factors or other injuries that may have been seen that actually cause them to delay their return. Now, what could be the potential reason why an athlete has to go back for a second surgery after meniscus repair? Now, Russell Westbrook is an example of an athlete who had, was reported to have a meniscus repair and then had two subsequent surgeries for issues that arose. Now, one of the things that happens throughout the rehab process and why sometimes there can be variability is that at each stage of the rehab process, the surgeon and his medical team that's taking care of him in terms of physical therapists, athletic trainers, et cetera, are assessing how the knee and the meniscus respond at each phase of the rehab process. So at each critical juncture, let's say it's six weeks, you're gonna get you into the brace and crutches, if your muscle strength isn't good, you may have to hold on to those crutches and brace for a little bit longer. In four months, when you're ready to begin running, if your mechanics aren't there or you don't have strength in terms of doing things like a single leg squat, you may have to hold off on when you begin running. As you get further and further along in the rehab course, particularly when you get to six, seven, eight, or nine months, one of the things that you may see as a knee is doing more load, such as doing more practice or jumping and running, is you may actually see the knee begin to swell up. Now, why is swelling a bad thing? Now, typically in an athlete after surgery, swelling, particularly when it's inside the joint, can indicate that there's something irritating the joint. Now, figuring out what actually is causing that irritation is sometimes key. And before you clear an athlete to fully go back to activity, if they're having swelling, that could potentially be a sign that there is something going on within the joint or with the prior repair. And based on the reports that were publicly in the media, that sounds like what may have caused James Wiseman to necessitate getting a secondary surgery to determine what was actually potentially causing the swelling in his knee. Now, what are some of the things that can cause swelling when you go in arthroscopically again, if that's a procedure that he had done that can cause swelling? Number one, sometimes you can just have generalized scar tissue that develops, which can cause some degree of swelling. That typically is not super concerning. And each athletes can generally get back um, several weeks after that procedure. Sometimes, such as the case that was reported with Russell Westbrook, some of the stitches that are used to basically repair the meniscus may be giving the patient irritation or may have come loose after the meniscus is healed and those need to be removed. Sometimes what can happen is the meniscus that it actually healed may have actually retorn or a new meniscus tear may have developed. Typically when you go in after repair and the meniscus hasn't healed, except in rare cases, sometimes you have to shave that area out, uh, which can sometimes be the source of pain. In addition, sometimes there can be secondary cartilage damage that may have resulted um, from the initial injury that didn't heal by itself or may have developed over a period of time in, in the rehab that has to be taken care of as well too. The key thing to understand is that once an athlete has undergone a secondary surgery, it can be very variable in terms of when they return to play. 
Now, if it's your first surgery is basically one of these cleanup procedures, we know pretty predictably that you can get back at six to eight weeks. So for instance, if an athlete has a meniscus tear and all you do is go and quote unquote, clean it out the first time, they're typically back at six to eight weeks. But if you subsequently go back and quote unquote, clean out a knee after they had a repair, it's much more unpredictable in terms of when that athlete will get back to play. Because the main question becomes, how is that knee gonna respond as you ramp back up rehab? It's hard to tell whether that knee may swell up again. And also based on what was found during the time of the secondary procedure, that may determine how quickly an athlete can back, get back to play. So just like with the initial rehab process, what you do is gradually increase load to make sure the knee doesn't swell. The difficult thing is that you don't really know if the knee will respond to this additional stress if it's gonna swell up. So as much as we like to put a timeline on things that say exactly at six to eight weeks, everything is gonna be healed. You're not necessarily dealing with quote unquote things being healed. You wanna make sure that the knee is able to respond to the stress that it basically entails. So you may slowly start ramping up. And if there are any degree of swelling, there's pain, there's stiffness, then you may hold an athlete back based on what they're experiencing. So there isn't a natural time frame where you say every single athlete at six weeks after a secondary surgery is going to get back. You simply just need to see how the knee is feeling and how the athlete is basically responding. The other critical thing to understand as well, too, is that when athletes have basically had multiple surgeries, it can take extra time to get back into shape. So as an athlete nears month 11, month 12 after being on the court, it can take additional time for them to get back into shape to make sure that they don't injure that knee again or injure parts of their body. So once again, about 10 to 20 percent of athletes will have secondary surgery after meniscus repair. So it's not uncommon. The exact reason for why that actual surgery was done helps to determine what it means short term and long term. But the critical thing to note is very hard to put a time frame on this after a secondary procedure because you're really waiting to see how the knee responds because it already hasn't responded once well. And secondarily, it's important to know what actually caused the knee to swell up in the first place, which then helps determine both short and long term outcomes. Thank you.